Hello again, I'm Michelle Hussein. You're watching Impact from the BBC, our main news today. The teenage Pakistani activist Malala Yousafzai speaks on camera for the first time since she was shot and nearly killed by the Taliban. And the king that ruled Cambodia for over 50 years has been cremated in the capital, Phnom Penh. Two years ago, we were reporting on the last few days of the Husni Mubarak regime, a period of unprecedented upheaval with millions on the streets in Egypt. But of course, it didn't end there. As the anniversary approaches, we are again seeing anger, this time directed at a new president, with many activists feeling that little has changed in Egypt. Well, in a moment, we're going to get an artistic impression of the revolution. But first, who are the people on the streets now? Well, here's a video that one group known as Mossirin has made about itself. So one face you might have recognized in that clip about the group Mossirin is Khalid Abdullah, an actor probably best known for the films United 93 and The Kite Runner. He's now at the heart of the protest movement and he's um, with us live from Cairo. And also here in the studio with me is the artist Mo Negam, also known as Mo Star. And we'll be talking about your work, uh, Mo, in just a moment. Um, Khalid, tell me more about the group because it strikes me that... Um, you're not doing much acting anymore. It seems like the revolution in Egypt has <laughs> taken over your life. I mean, um, the clip we saw talked about documenting. I is that what you're trying to do, documenting what goes, out, goes on on the streets? Uh, well, I mean, on a personal basis, uh, Mussolini is just one part of my activities. I mean, I actually have, uh, it seems, up to about five uh, different films that I'm involved in that probably are coming out in the next 12 months. Uh, I'm broadly involved in, uh, in film and cultural production, but also activism uh, on a broad basis. Um, Mussolini is, uh, uh, is an alternative activist video uh, collective that brings together a series of uh, filmmakers and activists and citizens who are engaged in doing everything they can through citizen media to, uh, to, uh, to engage in the political situation as it stands. So part of what we do is document, part of what we do is campaign support, part of what we do is distribute videos, part of what we do is provide a place in which various campaigns and organisations meet. Um, but I mean, I think this comes to the core of what you might be discussing uh, uh, with Mo as well, which is, you know, this issue of how you respond uh, if you have, as, as an artist, if you have transferable skills. I mean, as I see it, uh, I, I'm an actor and a filmmaker, which is to say that my uh, what I work with is storytelling yeah. and uh, in a revolution a revolution is a period in which the narratives national narratives regional narratives international narratives change so what you're engaged in uh, is this, you know uh, how, yeah. you, how you use but your storytelling abilities changes yeah and, and you want to be you want to be part of creating the narrative but you know I remember speaking to you on the day that Mubarak fell we were talking that very night and you know there was a clear political demand um, on the part of activists at that time and it was achieved and um, then we had demands over the Constitution I just wonder you know when people all over the world look at the anger on the streets of Egypt now and they think well you have this new president, you have a new constitution, what exactly is it that you want now? Well, I think that, I mean, in terms of how internationally people have started to understand what's going on in Egypt, I think the narratives have become confused. And I think the main reason for that confusion is because the tools of democracy have been used to create uh, another dictatorship. And it becomes very confusing when it seems like someone's been voted in to, to kind of challenge their authority or their rights to uh, their rights to rule. The fact of the matter is, is that uh, the Muslim Brotherhood since taking power have tried with all their might to rule this country exclusively uh, in their own interests. Uh, 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 and as we all know, one of the issues that Egypt faces is, you know, a revolution happens at, at a point at which things are out of balance. Yeah. 
yeah. putting but them back into balance is something that takes, that takes a long time. And the revolutionary forces are, are not the most organized forces on the ground, which is to say that when elections come, they don't necessarily sweep in the way okay. that, uh, could, that represents the country. Could, so could, it's, could a, it's a really you, an issue as to how you yeah, rule. Okay, but, but, I, but I want to ask you, what would you say to people who say that, you know, given the state of the Egyptian economy and what all of this has done to investment and tourism and, and many other sectors, that it's time for people like you to get off the streets and go back to work and that, and that you know, there are people who think that, that protest is, is a new lifestyle for some Egyptians well I mean what I would what I would tell them is is you if you delay the problem uh, you're going to result in a bigger explosion later which is exactly the same you know what you're suggesting is exactly the same uh, process of thought that was told to Egyptian people under Mubarak is you know like you know sit and work the things are going to fall apart uh, the Muslim Brotherhood are going to come to power and you're never going to be able to run the country you know like all, all these kind of like uh, bogeymen of of what might happen if you actually engage in changing the future of your country that you know it's actually currently in a strange way the turbulence that is protecting us because if we were to all sort of sit at home and let the country be exclusively run in a dictatorial way we wouldn't see change happen change is a process it takes time it's difficult you have to overcome very difficult periods and also in terms of the people who are in, who are in, a, who are in a country, you know, ask anyone who's lived through this revolution how much they have changed and how much they've had to change things about themselves to engage. Before the revolution, we were living in a country where we were actively told not to participate in its future. Yeah. Now we have to find ways to participate and we have to fight uh, whenever a hurdle, whenever we face a hurdle. Okay, Khalid, stay with us. I, I want to speak to Mo Negam now. Mo, we got interested in your work because um, you're an artist, you're a painter, and um, and essentially you have something in common with Khalid in that you're both British Egyptians. But right. uh, Tahrir Square in the final days of Hosni Barak started to inspire your painting, and I think we're going to pull up the paintings and tell me why it inspired your Thank work. You. Well, Khalid touched upon a few um, subjects there that are close to my heart, and I think um, what we've all felt as British Egyptians and also we've seen and, and we've had it described that Egyptians living in Egypt um, is a sense of awakening and the revolution and, and the scenes in Tahrir Square really awakened something within me. And this is one of your paintings <coughs> that is Tahrir Square, right? I mean, it's, it's recognisable. I recognise these That's buildings. Right. That's right. It's Were you actually, there? Um, no, I haven't. I wasn't there at the time, no. But you see, I'm very conscious that I was res responding as an outsider looking in and responding to the bravery and the courage of the Egyptians and just the symbolism of, of the scene, seeing the crowd and, and the way I paint the pictures, it, it symbolises this collectivism and, and the sense of energy and, and bravery that we saw from the Egyptians and I think it's very vital to not lose sense of that. And ha do you feel as strongly now because it sounds from what Khalid was saying that he feels as strongly about dictatorship today as he did then. Is I, it the same for I you? I do. I mean, to touch upon what he was saying there, I, what I think, you know, is happening is, is the rhetoric of the language and, and you know, we, we could say that the Muslim Brotherhood is, is trying to claim the revolution. Um, but having said that, I do also respect the voices that say that um, Morsi hasn't had enough time. Um, but having been to Egypt just recently in December after the controversial decree, families are divided, you know, you speak to taxi drivers, people on the street. Um, I sp spoke to family and friends and everybody's divided. Um, and essentially everybody wants the country up on its feet and moving. Yeah. Let me get a final thought from um, Khalid Abdullah, if um, we can. Um, Khalid, we don't have very much time, but you know, are you optimistic that overall, as this as this process of revolution continues in Egypt, and um, things are getting better? I'm deeply optimistic. I mean, what we've seen time and time again is that no matter you know, no matter the problems we face, people still have the energy in them to keep fighting for the change that they were fighting for exactly two years ago. I mean, in the last few weeks, we've had exactly the same number of people on the streets as we did two years ago. Now, that's a bad sign, <laughs> and it's also a very good sign. It means that no matter, you know, no matter what they try and throw at us, no matter how many of us they kill, um, we will keep fighting for the demands that we went down to the streets to at the beginning. Freedom, okay. social justice, bread. It has to keep going. Khalid, thank you and very much indeed. Um, Khalid Abdullah, um, the actor and activist live with us from Cairo and also with me here in the studio, Mo Nagam. And thank you, Mo, for sharing your beautiful um, work, which is right around us here in the studio as we bring this to an end. It's, it's really fantastic. So thanks for, um, thanks for coming. You'll find uh, Mo's work online.
as uh, Mo Starve. That's it from Impact for today from me and all the team. Goodbye.